Uh, welcome, this is the uh, first edition of the Memory House, which is a side blog to the uh, main Tiny Fish stuff, because I didn't really want to put all of my solo stuff on the Tiny Fish page. So uh, this is the very first blog of the Memory House. Um, and for this first blog, what I decided to do is, uh, I thought it might be a good idea, because uh, I'm just back from, uh, from Rosfest a few weeks back, and of course I've had a very, very severe haircut, um, and taken off most of my beard, because out with the old, in with the new. Um, what I really wanted to do is I wanted to show you a little bit about uh, how someone actually goes, or at least how I go about, starting an album. Um, just starting the Shine Back project and I'm um, just about to get into the writing session. So um, uh, I remember one of the guys, I think it was a guy called Peter Pedro on our uh, forum, uh, Tiny Fish forum, saying it, he found it very interesting about uh, some of the ways that... Uh, that stuff gets created. So I thought, actually, no, that's a good idea. So uh, thanks, Pedders. Um, and so what I'm doing uh, is I'm going to show you today uh, some of the ways that uh, that I normally start off an album. And for me, this is the most exciting period. This is the bit which I really love the best because effectively what it does is it uh, it allows me free reign. I love blank spaces because I get the chance to fill them. Um, so uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a few little tricks which I do, um, and certainly to start off the uh, the creative process, um, and uh, hopefully it'll give you an idea of uh, exactly how the uh, the Shine Back writing sessions will go. So come with me. So every project that I normally start uh, starts with one thing, which is this. Now, if you notice here, it says Computer Local is Shine Back, and there, this folder is empty. Now what this actually means is this bugger all in. This is where I'm going to be doing most of my work, or at least I hope I'll be doing my most of my work, and there's nothing here. Now, I think for some people this could be a very frightening thing, but I absolutely love this bit. I love the fact that there's absolutely nothing there, and I like the thought that at some point later on this will be filled up with loads and loads of goodies. So uh, I'm going to show you a few things that, uh, that I normally uh, do to get started and, uh, and fill that gap, if you will. The first thing that you probably expect me to do is pick up one of these. That's uh, my filthy little. Oh my god, that is a bit grubby. Um, my uh, my strap. Uh, this is normally where I do most of my uh, my writing for uh, for tiny fish. But this time round, I've decided for the shine back stuff, I'm going to absolutely leave this alone as much as I possibly can. Um, because of two reasons. One, I want to do a little bit of research and development, so I've got something else to give to. Uh, uh, to uh, Tiny Fish when uh, when we eventually get back together late uh, early next year. And uh, the second thing is I just wanted to try something a bit different. So what I normally do is I normally use this. Now this is a very unassuming object, but this is a bag full of all of my demos from yesteryear. And it's got literally got loads and loads of demos. What's that one from September? Oh, bloody hell, 97. Um, and this normally sort of contains basically all of the, 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 the tape demos, if you will, and, and, and built up over the years various different sort of like riffs and stuff which I've, uh, I've got. And what I normally do is I take take these these tapes and um, oh my god, it's an old men are dead tape there. Look at that. Um, and I take these uh, these tapes and uh, bloody hell, a free fall one as well. Look, look, free fall. Whee. Um, and I put them into this thing here. Now, where is it? It's over here. Now, this is a great bit of kit, this is. You're going to love this. What this is, it's effectively, it's a tape recorder. Probably some of, some of you out there have seen it before. Tape recorder. And if I just open it up here, what I do is I put take all of the stuff in here, I plonk some of it in here, and then I stick it in here because it's got a USB thing. Where are we? There got the USB thingy do there I just go boom, boom, like that and then that uh, well or it stays in usually um, and then what I do is I then listen to all of the stuff and see if there's any riffs well what we've done or what I've done actually just to uh, to cut a little bit of the uh, the boring stuff out of it is uh, is actually put everything down on using this uh, piece of machinery uh, onto iTunes, which is over here. And what you've got is you've got a whole load of riffs which I'm now gonna sort of listen through to. Well, this is uh, this is the first one actually I've got is a, is a track called 
Who's in My House, which a lot of these demos are from uh, sort of like the early 2000s and, uh, and, and I think some of them even from the 90s actually. So uh, this is a little bit of a journey through, uh, through my past as well. This is Who's in My House. <laughs> something out of, uh, of Pink Floyd's Animals. Oh yeah. I always remember Rob absolutely hating that title, uh, Babies of the Backlash. Well, it's not particularly a great title to be honest with you, but I was being very stubborn at the time. One of the other great things about being in Tiny Fish uh, is that I now actually have Robert to write most of the lyrics. Some of the lyrics that I wrote back in these days were real six form whiny. Oh, why is the world so unfair on me? Thank you, middle age. Sequence. Oh, I'm having that. This is one of the other things that really gets me. Uh, sometimes I listen to riffs and I think to myself, how on earth was I playing that? Some of this stuff is just like, because you get used to chords falling under your hand and stuff. If it's from a long time ago, is indeed some of this stuff actually is. This is well over ten years ago. I just have no idea how I played this. This is Oak Farm. We used to play this as Men Are Dead. Jim, myself, Paul and Rob. And this was actually, this is interesting. This was actually written while I was out in the USA. This is the very first time I went out to uh, to the States and I bought my uh, Ovation guitar, the one that, uh, that I play mostly at the acoustic gigs. Uh, so this must have actually been this, almost the same afternoon or the afternoon after. I bought it from Manny's in America, in uh, uh, in, um, in New York. Um, the guitar, by the way, not the riff. Yeah, it's the Ovation. Now, it says melodic chuggy dessert, but I suspect it probably means descent. <laughs> well, that was the... Uh, I didn't even realise that that was on there. That's actually one of the, uh, the, the sections out of All Hands Lost. Well, that's the acoustic stuff, but there'll probably be another angle that I'll be pursuing more vigorously, and that's from the computer end of, uh, of things, the electronic end. Um, and uh, much like the uh, the tape demos, I have a whole load of, uh, of demos sitting around on the computer as well. So uh, what I'll do is I'll be going through and listening to some of those to see if there's anything else that, uh, that I can use uh, for this project. So let's have a quick look at what it is that I'm using to, uh, to write these demos. So this is Acid Pro. I tend to do most of my initial writing in here and basically this is my library of sounds and effectively what you have here is a complete list of, uh, of my samples and uh, it's around about 20 gig of, of sample stuff and basically there's just about everything in there that I normally use to sort of like flesh together normal arrangements. For example here are all my guitar odds and sods. Now some of this has been either recorded by myself 
Um, some of it has actually been uh, nicked off the front of uh, free magazines. Um, you can sometimes get free samples off the front of the magazines. And some of this stuff has been purchased. Um, and what this normally allows me to do is, is use riffs as placeholders until I can get stuff sorted. Um, there's some interesting stuff here. Let's, for example, let's go to the drums. Now this is a uh, got loads and loads of sort of different bits and bobs here um you got uh, this is what I tend to use this is my sort of like rock and time signatures kit if I want to actually put together um odd time signatures or just basically odds and sods and stuff there's a glam one there I I really remember that um and what else have we got here uh we've got the long samples now this is uh, basically this one here this is all the samples that I've gathered together which are effectively Mostly long droney type things, which tend to be stuff which is over a minute long, and uh, and I tend to use these as sort of atmospheric odds and sods. It's quite good. The uh, the shell tree one is actually very very good. I haven't I don't think I've used that in in anything so far, but it is a really nice bit of kit, or at least a nice bit of uh, of sample. Um, and the very other odds and sods. This is an interesting one as well. This is the uh, drum kit, This is it says there, as you can see, it says Simon kit there. And what this is, is effectively a set of samples that um, that I took from the Big Red Spark drum kit that uh, that you might have seen me playing uh, a, a while back in one of the previous Tiny Verses. And effectively what this is, is a, a sample of each of the, uh, the the items on that kit. So it was quite useful for, uh, for flying in stuff if ever there was something that I screwed up. And I might actually use that now. Um, for the uh, for the Shineback album because there's some quite good single hit samples on that one. What I tend to do is I tend to use these uh, samples uh, to sort of flesh out an arrangement and once I've got that I fly it into Pro Tools then I replace it all with actual playing and it's a very very good way of working because uh, it means that uh, if uh, if you're a bit low on inspiration or if, it's, uh, or if there are places you can't normally uh, reach out with your technique it allows you to do that kind of stuff and then uh, of course what you can do is then you can make it more uh, your own. Oh well, there you have it. Uh, that's all of the toys that I usually employ to destroy a blank page. I'll be back with another Memory House in the near future once I've actually written something. So until then, take care. Bye-bye. Go on, go. Bye-bye. Well, I'll go then. So do you.